Amanda's son was rushed to the hospital with life-threatening head injuries at only seven days old. Oh. The boy required brain surgery, and doctors said the injuries were consistent with the child being violently shaken. Whoa. They were not accidental. Whoa. Amanda and her boyfriend Josh were questioned by the police, and Josh eventually confessed to causing the injuries. Whoa. But now Josh's brother Justin believes his confession was just a lie to try to cover up the truth. This story made headlines, and two days after Josh was arrested, news reporters interviewed Amanda. Take a look. I didn't think nothing about it. I honestly thought he scratched the inside of his eye. And I honestly don't think he would do anything like that to a child. If he was to do anything to my baby, I would have heard that baby cry. They don't know if he's going to have um, any medical problems. They don't know if he's going to be blind or deaf or anything. But I know I'll be able to take care of him if they ever let me get him back. I really don't think he did it at all. I love him to death, but if I find out he did, he really, he could rot. They took the baby into uh, surgery, took half his skull out, drained the, drained the blood from, from his head, and now, to this day, he still, he still don't have a um, skull. His, his head's all swollen. I can't even imagine somebody doing this to a baby. He's gonna have to live like this the rest of his life. We just need to know the answers, the truth. Because my best friend, he's in prison now. And she's just sitting out here like it's nothing. Every time I think about my, my, my little brother, Joshua, it, it hurts me inside because he's, he's my best friend. Now he's in prison for something he didn't do, you know? And it's like, it's, it's pretty messed up that I lost my best friend over some female. The letter that Josh sent from prison and describing what Amanda did to that baby is just horrifying. I get a letter saying that the baby was crying, Amanda was taking care of the baby. The baby wouldn't stop crying, so she smacked him in his head, dropped him, squeezed his stomach, popped him in his mouth, and the baby kept on crying and crying and crying, and then she put the bottle in his mouth, put him in the crib, and left him there for the rest of the night. And then to top it off, she makes Josh lie and say that he did it to stick up for her. He, he confessed to it because he was scared. He's only 18 years old. He's 19 now. He's still scared. She ain't seen her kids after that happened. And she just sat in her house and did drugs for a whole about six months now. It makes me think that she has something to do with it. You know, or she knows something and she's just trying to hide it by doing drugs. And I want to know you know, what happened, you know, because that's my friend, and I don't want to believe she would do something like that to a child, to a poor, innocent, little seven-day-old baby. I feel that, that, she, that she needed to be punished, too, because it's, it's totally unfair. It's like, she's out there, and he's in there, and it's, it's, it's like a merry-go-round over and over and over again. It plays in my head every night, all night long. We asked you, Amanda, did you cause the injuries to your infant son when he was seven days old? You answered no. And the results to all the questions is significant reactions. Wow. What does that mean? I don't, you look, you probably lied. You had you know significant reactions. It's a, it's I don't know exactly you know what, what that means, that baby. but we'll bring out Dan Rebukoff and he can explain that. <laughs> Um, one of the worst stories that uh, probably happened in our state and that we're covering on the show. Uh, here's a child that gets seven days in the world and gets violently beaten. Horrible. Indisputable. Child can't crawl, can't walk, can't do anything. Child was beaten up. Um, young guy took uh, confesses to it, gets uh, 20 years in jail. Uh, here's a mother on my stage who says she didn't know anything. Uh, and then after it happened, told the reporters, I think he was innocent. There's no way he could have done this. She comes on the show, uh, four questions here, she answers no to, and the result of it is significant reactions. Uh, can you explain that? Sure, Steve. So significant reactions 
is what occurs when a person is deceptive. And I usually translate that into deception indicated, meaning that the person is not being truthful. However, there's an issue with her test. She tested positive and confessed to using methamphetamines and marijuana just days before this test. Meanwhile, she, she was booked on this show for three weeks, so she knew that she wasn't supposed to use drugs. So because she's testing positive, I can't call her decision properly under polygraph standards by saying that she's deceptive because she's impaired. You told us, you told my staff that you were clean for one month when you got here. No, I did yes, not. Yes, you did. No, I did not. We would not bring you, if you <laughs> admitted, to, first of all, let me yesterday. tell you something, we've been doing the show for seven years. If you told us I that you weren't doing drugs, we wouldn't have brought you. she sat there and told me. Right now we know she's lying, but right. go ahead, Dan. So the drugs you're could have been. Again, you're a liar. The you're drugs could have been. You, in what attack. happened to your kid? This ain't about right, me. It's we'll about see. you. We'll, we'll find out. We'll, we'll find out. out. We'll find out. Right. You're Wait till we get home. So no, the drugs could have been an attempt at countermeasures. Oh. I don't and know. And we gave her a drug Sorry. test, and she failed. She failed. She failed. See, stop. Yeah, right. It's not about you. So she. So she failed. Stop. Do it. let me explain. This is real important. Take her off. So, Steve, not being able to say under the polygraph that she is deceptive or not, I can tell you that she has significant reactions to those questions. So I utilized additional credibility assessment tools that you know as a police officer are utilized, because not everybody takes a polygraph, but you get a forensic interview. Much like what you do, Steve, you pick this up right away that she was deceptive. She fails her structured, scored forensic interview, which means that she's deceptive. I also had her write out a statement um, indicating what the situation is about and how she would explain it. And utilizing what's known as scientific content analysis, or SCAN, um, I forensically examined that statement and deemed her deceptive as well. Right. Um, and, and for the fact of common sense, you wouldn't say the things that you did. You wouldn't you would say, I'm not showing up in court. Uh, it makes. Uh, you know what it is? It makes sense for a guilty person. Exactly. So, you thanks said for coming it, Steve. Out there. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Um.